Now that Fusion has been integrated into Resolve 15, I thought I would make a tutorial demonstrating the power of Fusion. And what better example to choose than to revisit doing a travel map animation. When approaching this task, you will quickly realise the advantage of a node-based workflow and the ease at which Fusion makes complex procedures surprisingly easy. By using Fusion, we can do everything we need within the programme and there is no need for external editors such as GIMP or Photoshop. And there is no need for tedious keyframing. We simply define a path and automatically animate along it. If you have ever used After Effects, you will be aware of defining a path and auto-rotating a longer path. And now I'm going to show you how to do it right here in Resolve. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> you can see in our project files, we've got a red solid colour a plane and a map. Now for the red solid colour, I just went to the effects library, generators, and then the solid colour. And then I just changed the colour to red. One thing I need to mention is normally there wouldn't be any need to generate this solid colour. We'd just go into fusion and we'd just generate say a background node and we'd colour that red. But in this edition of Resolve, this beta edition, I noticed a small bug. So that's why I've done that there. Also, I noticed a small bug with working with the images directly in Fusion. So what I did is I converted those images to compound clips before working in Fusion. So with our map loaded onto the timeline, let's go into Fusion. You can see here we've got two nodes. We've got the media in and we got the media out. At the moment they show exactly the same thing, our map, as we haven't manipulated anything yet. If we wanted to view the node in the viewer, we'd just highlight the node and we'd press the one key, like so. And as you can see, we can see the map. But it's possible to have more than one viewer, so if we wanted to view more than one node at the same time. To set that up, you'd simply go to the controls that I've highlighted and you'd select your desired view. So if we had two viewers, you'd normally press the one key to display a node in the left viewer and the two key to display a node in the right viewer. Now that you understand this basic concept, let's bring our other project files in. So let's drag our red block color in from the media pool, press F2 to rename. We'll call that red line. And then let's drag our plane in. We can press F2 to rename, and let's call that plane. Let's rename the media in to map. We now highlight the red line node by clicking on it. What we need to do is if we grab the square here and drag it onto the square of the map, we can see it's created a merge node. As we drag the red line onto the map, the red line will be the foreground and the map will be the background. If we'd done it the other way around, the foreground and the background would be switched the other way. So with the merge node selected, press the one key to see it in the viewer. We now want to add a paint mask. So with the merge node selected, we press the control and the space key and you see the pop-up box comes up. Now we need to search that for mask paint. Click OK. With the Paint Mask node selected, go to the Polyline tool. And if we just click and drag in a straight line, and then click somewhere else, it will draw a nice curve to our desired location. 
I think that's a bit thick, so we go to the brush controls. Pick our brush and choose the desired size. We can now go to the stroke controls and adjust the spacing. And you see that now changes it into a dotted line. You can play around and find out what you think's best for you. What we need to do is animate now, that now. You can see our right on. We can manipulate that over time to give the effect of a trail along the map. So we can just right click and select animate, or we can just click this keyframes. Go to our timeline, drag it to where we want the effect to end, say around frame 80, and then move the slider all the way to the end. And there you see. Let's go to the media out and just preview that. The first time it does it, it will be a bit slow, but then it should load it in at normal speed. Now that that part of the animation is complete, we want to be able to use it to affect other operations that we may want to perform. So we go back to the mass paint node and we go where it says on the right, right click here for shape animation. And we click publish. That will make it globally available so that we can use it to affect other operations that we may want to perform. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now we need to animate the plane. So we click on the plane node and we select the square and we drag it on to the merge one node. And we can see it's created now the merge two node. If we click on that and look at it in the viewer, we can see it's added the plane. We're now going to right click on the center and select path. All that does is add a path field with no values attributed. But if we double click on that path and open it, and we go to the bottom, right click here for shape animation, go to connect to polyline value. That's our value that we published earlier. Now, if we remove the keyframe, from displacement and we can see that our plane is now in sync with that dotted line. We've still got a number of problems though, one of them being that the plane is far too large, but that's an easy fix. We go onto the plane node and we press control spacebar and then we type in transform. We select it. And then we can change the size to whatever we want. We can also manipulate the angle. Let's go back to our merge two node and have a look at the result of that. So if we go back to the modifiers displacement and we can see the size looks better. But what we want it to do is to actually auto rotate along the path. And that's really easy. We just go to tools, we right click on angle, connect to path one and heading. We just need to go back to our transform node and tweak that angle now. Let's go back to our displacement and preview the result. And that's working perfectly. Let's go ahead and keyframe that 
so that we can affect the change over time. We can now select the Media Out node and have a look at the final result. And we can go to the Edit page and we see that our animation is all there, ready to use in our project. By integrating Fusion directly into Resolve, it really has made for a very powerful solution. It's made doing these map animations very easy and a host of other special effects. Actually, come to think of it, let's just quickly add a shadow to the aeroplane. A node-based workflow makes it really easy to keep adding things. We simply select the plane node, control and spacebar and type shadow. It's then just a matter of placing the shadow wherever we want to under the plane. It really is as simple as that. Let's preview the final result. We could then go ahead and add some dynamic zoom and we get something that looks like this. We could keep adding more and more effects but I think that's a good place to finish, as I don't want the tutorial to be too long. If you enjoyed this tutorial and felt like you learnt something, please like, subscribe and comment below. Thank you.